Hey everyone, my name is Francisco Santana. I'm the coordinator of youth ministry here at Our Lady of the Lake in Lake Havasu City. And today I want to talk really quickly about cell phone usage and cell phone addiction, especially with teens. So I wanted to do this video because I've been noticing more and more at mass children and teens on their cell phones and not like looking up the readings, but actively playing video games or on social media. And, uh, one rule that I think parents should have for their teens is, um, one, I don't think teens need cell phones, but if you choose to give them cell phones, they need to learn moderation. When is the right time to use it? When is it okay to use it? But cell phone addiction, technology addiction is real and the negative consequences are huge. And the And this is a new problem for our society. When I was growing up, cell phones were for the wealthy and cell phones were very uh, bulky. They didn't have a screen, right? And if we think back to Saved by the Bell, right, we think of Zach Morris and he had that phone that he held up to his ear and everybody thought that was awesome. And things have changed so much. Now we have cell phone addiction and it is rampant. And it's not just amongst teens, it's amongst adults as well. And it's an issue that really needs to be addressed, especially because the statistics that are coming out are scary. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about this, and I'm going to get most of my information from psychguides.com, and they reference all of their material, all the studies that they had to look up to get the, this information. And so I just want to address some of these things. And me saying don't have cell phones in mass, well, because our focus should be on the mass, it should be on the Eucharist. And this isn't coming from a place of judgment, but a place of concern. That I want what is best for our young people, I want what is best for you. And so we need to be aware. Consciousness about the problem is one of the first steps in overcoming the problems that we have. So I'm going to read a little bit here and then I'm going to kind of comment on what's being said. So the first thing that psychguides.com on their article about teen cell phone addiction, it says that the human brain isn't finished developing until around the age of 25 years old. If a child or teenager suffers from a cell phone addiction, it could have negative implications on brain development. Research has revealed that there are a few adolescent personality traits associated with internet addiction. These are some of them. So one is high harm avoidance. These individuals tend to be worrisome, fearful, pessimistic, and shy. Two is that they have an altered reward dependence. So the teens, they become dependent on rewards that are associated with the internet or cell phones. Uh, and so they're not used to natural rewards such as spending time with families and friends, getting good grades, or take, partaking in hobbies. Right, so this all it compounds. There's a lot that goes into this, um, but we're so associated with getting likes on our posts in social media that we have replaced the natural reward system for this virtual reality world, uh, reward system. So it's important to be aware that one, getting all those likes is fake. People can just be scrolling and clicking and just letting people know, hey, I'm, I noticed your post or whatever. But it's not real. It's not real. It's, and it's a fake reward. And it's kind of like going to a casino. And one of the reasons people stay on the same machine over and over again, even if it's not paying out, is because they're so stimulated by all the sound and all the um, all the lights. And cell phones do the same thing with the constant scrolling, all the constant images. It's overstimulating the mind. And so people feel rewarded for their posts. And when it comes to real life rewards, people don't get that same satisfaction. Okay, other indications that somebody has an addiction to the internet or cell phone usage. Low self-esteem, low cooperation. Teens generally suffer with low self-esteem. This isn't new, but it's become a bigger problem. It's at a greater uh, level of low self-esteem. Okay, I have parents coming to me very frequently talking to me about how their kids are disconnected. They say that they're depressed 
that they don't want to be spending time with the family, that all they want to do is go into the room and be on their cell phones or on the couch and on the cell phones, whatever it might be. And they just don't seem happy. Well, because we need human connection. We need to be connected to people. We need to have real life experiences. And when we're so connected to our technology that we're actually disconnected from others, we're missing a fundamental component to our humanity. And that is the human experience of being connected with others. So I really want to encourage you to be paying attention to this in your teens. If you decide that you're going to give your teen a cell phone, these are very clear indicators that someone is addicted to their cell phone. And maybe you're hearing this and thinking, you know what, maybe that's me, (laughs) right? Maybe you're noticing that you yourself, you're experiencing some of this low self-esteem that you'd rather be scrolling on your phone than talking to others. And so it's important to be aware of the impact of cell phone usage on us. So here are some effects of teen smartphone addiction, right? So those are some indicators that somebody might be addicted to cell phones. And here's some effects of cell phone addiction. So one is decreased brain activity in parts of the brain that regulate emotion, decision-making, impulse control. I see this a lot with our teens right now. There are some teens that they seem like they seem to have a glazed over look. Uh, They seem to be very hesitant to make decisions. They don't want to raise their hand to answer. I've seen this more in the last few years than I have uh, any time in, in all the years that I've been doing youth ministry. Another side effect is that people have an increased likelihood to consume alcohol and use tobacco an increased likelihood to have poor dietary habits, and increased levels of social loneliness. And for all the reasons we mentioned above, right? People are disconnected. Even though they feel connected in a certain sense, it's not real, right? It's not real. And so people are feeling lonely, even though they're more connected than they've ever been. In fact, they're overconnected. But because it's not real, it's a virtual reality, people aren't actually connected. So the loneliness is manifesting our disconnectedness. So additionally, addiction to the cell phone could lead to a number of other harmful ramifications, such as text neck. Other people call this nerd neck. So it's neck pain associated with looking down at the cell phone for too long. And this can also have this posture of the neck being down and forward away from having good posture being up straight. Right, so we can have problems with our spine and it's associated with this, with being connected to technology, sitting in front of the screen or cell phone. There's also digital eye strain and that's burning and itching of eyes and blurred vision associated with looking at a screen for at least two hours. I started noticing this when I used to play video games with my brother. We would play uh, Call of Duty or Halo. And this was again, you know, years ago, I just mentioned Halo and some people may not even know what that is. So, We'd be playing on the video games for hours and hours and we would blink at the end of a, of a round and all of a sudden our eyes would be itchy and watery and it's exactly what that is, but people are experiencing this more frequently. Uh, also car accidents, right? We know that uh, research has revealed that text mess- texting and driving is just as dangerous as drunk driving. Okay, research has also revealed 92% of teens say that they go online daily while 24% consider themselves to be online almost constantly. It's a constant issue. We always have our cell phones in our hands or nearby. Our phones can flash at us, even if we have the screen down, to let us know, hey, someone's calling, someone's texting, you're getting an alert, right? Over half of teenagers go online many times a day. 94% of teenagers Teenagers access the internet via their smartphones at least once a day, if not more. I'd say it's a lot more based on reactions that I've had from my teens when I talk to them about these statistics. Facebook is the most commonly visited social media site for teens, followed by Instagram and then Snapchat. So there's a lot more we can go into, right? So does my teen have a cell phone addiction? These are some signs you can look for. Anxiety depression and depression can be there's a lot of indicators for depression significant weight change change in diet uh, change in sleep patterns fatigue depressed or an irritable mood flat effect or facial expressions i've been noticing this a lot with my teens 
they seem to have this again like glazed over look not all of them obviously not all my teams but the ones who I'm noticing that there are a lot of these trends where there's def a definite addiction and difficulties paying attention withdrawal from social interactions activities all those things that we mentioned before okay so there's treatment right so uh, there are different centers that you can send them to family boot camps uh, so there's there's help that's available if you don't already have a cell phone for your teen i highly recommend that you don't start if we all survived without cell phones so so will they our teens will survive without cell phones if you choose to give them a cell phone, I would say use it in moderation, especially for teenagers. Uh, adults as well, we need to learn how to moderate our use on the cell phones. But again, the statistics are scary on how cell phones are going to impact the development of our children's brains, the impact it's going to have on society, and how we interact with one another. There's a Catholic apologist, named, his name is Matt Frad, and he talks about the benefits of actually fasting from cell phone use. And he spent this last August off of his cell phone, off of his technology, off the internet. And he was just speaking how much he gained out of it. And I think that's a really good thing to do from time to time, is just take a break. All things in moderation, right? Uh, St. John Bosco, I believe, is the one who said, be a saint and then do whatever you'd like. Right? So cell phones, technology, sitting in front of a screen all day, all those things can have a negative impact, not just on teens, but on us adults. There's no need for teens or for young people under, under the age of 13 to have a cell phone. That's my opinion. And the statistics are backing that up, and that it's a really negative thing to for them to have. Again, this isn't coming from a place of judgment. It's coming from a place of concern for for our young people, for our society. So uh, just know that the statistics are coming out that back this up, and we need to do better for our kids. Okay. God bless you guys. I hope you got something out of this video. Um, let me know what you think. If you disagree, if you think I'm completely um, off base, go ahead and comment below. I want to hear your your reasons. Give me give me facts. I want to hear what you've got to say. Um, but all opinions should be based on facts. And so if you're going to say that I'm wrong, um, go ahead and give me the articles and the statistics down below. I'd love to hear um what else is out there? Maybe I'm missing something. Um, but based on the statistics that I read today, that's what I'm experiencing working with young people. If you're a parent and you're concerned, seek help. Seek help. There's there's a responsibility that we have to our kids to do what is best for them. And giving them everything that they think they want is not doing what's best for them. We need to be aware of God's love and how to connect them to God's love. And it begins with us having a personal relationship with Christ and his church. God love you. And I look forward to hearing your responses. I'll see you guys soon.